you will sometimes be asked to find ion concentration and this is really less about concentration and more really a subset of stoichiometry but I'll just show you how by doing three examples so you might see a question like what is the concentration of each ion in a 5.55 mole per liter zinc phosphate solution and the key to remember here is that when you put zinc phosphate into water since it's an ionic bond and it is soluble in water it will dissociate and dissociation or perhaps ionization if we're dealing with an acid is really the key to thinking about ion concentration so in order to know the information we need about dissociation you must have a balanced chemical equation for these or a balanced dissociation equation. So that will be our first step to solving ion concentrations. So what I mean by a balanced dissociation equation is just taking our zinc phosphate and looking at what ions would be produced as that dissolves and dissociates in water. So that's this equation here saying that when we take zinc phosphate and which is in solid form and dissolve it in water it turns into zinc 2 plus ions and phosphate 3 minus ions and we have to make sure that this is balanced by the 3 and the 2 in as our coefficients here so I'm not going to go into balancing chemical equations because that should be something you know but from here let's label that we have 5.55 moles per liter of our zinc phosphate so let's treat this like a stoichiometry problem. If we start with 5.55 moles per liter of zinc phosphate, I'm going to label the moles of zinc phosphate, but I'm not going to put a label by the liters because actually in concentration, this would be liters of total solution, and that's going to be the same. I'll write it here just to be clear, but this is liters of total solution. It's not really liters of zinc phosphate per se. That's it's just the water and the zinc phosphate combined and now let's take this and multiply it by some number such that we can cancel out those moles of zinc phosphate and we want to find out how many moles per liter we have of each of the ions so if we could cancel out moles of zinc phosphate and introduce moles of zinc for or zinc 2 plus for example then we would be using the balanced mole ratio so there's three moles of zinc ions for every one mole of zinc phosphate and if we look at our units here we've canceled out moles of zinc phosphate and our units that we have at this point are the ones we desire so we'll do the multiplication and round to three significant digits for 16.7 moles per liter and with the moles we're talking about here are zinc 2 plus so we can safely say that the concentration of zinc ions and remember this these square brackets indicate concentration is 16.7 moles per liter now if you go look at what we actually did all we all we used in this case was the mole ratio so we took the moles per liter of our starting compound and we multiplied by the mole ratio in this case the the number one of course there's only a one beside the zinc sulfate so that made it even simpler yet sometimes you'll have to multiply and divide but using that and having done a sample calculation already I'm going to report the concentration of the phosphate ions by just showing my 5.55 moles per liter and multiplying by two in this case because this three in our first equation would be a two for our zinc or for our phosphate calculation and come directly to my answer of 11.1 .1 moles per liter for the phosphate concentration so that is the concentration of each ion in our dissociated solution as we dissolved it all right example number two what is the concentration of each ion in the solution formed when 16.5 grams of magnesium chloride is dissolved in 600 milliliters of water. I'm going to start with the balanced dissociation equation right away. This is what's happening literally when we dissolve it. And here we can see our ions forming. Now notice that now here we are not starting with concentration. The only information we're given is 16.5 grams. 
and 600 mils of water, which again is the water, the solution. So let me do a quick sketch of sort of how I'm going to solve this problem. I want to start with my number of grams of magnesium chloride, use that to figure out how many moles of magnesium chloride I have, and then find the concentration. Once I know the concentration of magnesium chloride, I can use the mole ratio to find the concentration of the ions. So you could do this in separate steps if you like. I'm going to do it in one great big long string again. So we're going to start with 16 and a half grams of magnesium chloride. Let's divide that by our mole ratio of grams per one mole of magnesium chloride. And that number is 95.21. So at this point, grams of magnesium chloride will cancel out. Let's turn that into a concentration by dividing it by the number of liters of solution. Um, we're not going to have any number on the top of our fraction here, but liters of solution. And we're going to write six or 0 0.6 liters as our liters of solution. Now we know that when you add some 16.5 grams of a crystal it may or may not keep the same volume, but not being told otherwise, we're going to assume that it does because we don't have any other information. So we'll assume that 600 milliliters is our final solution after everything is dissolved, not just the, the volume of the water beforehand. Now I can't cancel out any units, but I do see that the units I have are in moles per liter except it's moles of magnesium chloride and I'm really looking for the moles of my ions, but that being said, I am going to stop here anyway to calculate my concentration of magnesium chloride. That way I can use it twice for each of my two ions. So let's take 16.5 and divide it by 95.21 and divide it again by 0.6 and we get 0 0.2888. We're going to keep a few extra significant digits here so that we can round properly only when we get to our final answer. In terms of units, we are talking about moles uh, per liter, or moles of magnesium chloride in a liter of solution. But let's remember what we actually set out to calculate is the concentration of magnesium ions and of chloride ions. So the magnesium ions, if you look at our mole ratio, for every one magnesium chloride, there is one magnesium ion. So that's easy. One to one mole ratio means the concentration of magnesium ions is also 0 0.288. And in this case, we can round to three significant digits. So 0 0.289 moles per liter. And for the chloride ions, if we go back to our mole ratio, we know that for every one magnesium chloride, there are two chloride atoms. So we can multiply the concentration by two. And that gives us 0 0.5776. So rounding that is 0 0.578. All right, so what, just a quick note. When I uh, multiplied by two here, I wasn't being as picky as usual with my uh, units and everything cancellation, but I, we did check to make sure it will work. I showed you one example above where we made sure the units cancel. And we're going to do another example that shows we need to be a little bit careful that we don't just blindly multiply either. So long story short, go ahead and make your units cancel or at least look at the mole ratio carefully and make sure you're doing the right thing by multiplying and dividing. So our last example here, if the sulfate ion concentration is 0 0.600 moles per liter, how many grams of aluminum, aluminum sulfate were dissolved to make 100 mils of solution? As always, the first thing to start with is our balanced dissociation equation. So if you take aluminum sulfate and dissolve it in water, you're going to get two aluminum ions and three sulfate ions. In this case, the information we're given is a little bit different because we are told that the sulfate ion concentration is 0 0.600 moles per liter. And we are asked how many grams of aluminum sulfate were dissolved in 100 mils of solution. So I think the safest way here is to use a single long equation, make sure our units are doing the proper things. And since we only have one thing to calculate, we won't need to reuse our data anyway. 
So we can start with 0 0.600 moles per liter. And again, the moles are dealing with the sulfate ion. The liter is technically talking about our solution. We are obviously going to need to get to the aluminum sulfate. So our mole ratio will aim to cancel the sulfate ions and introduce the aluminum sulfate and based on our balanced equation there are three moles of the ions for every one mole of the aluminum sulfate. So looking what our next step would be at some point we are going to have to turn this moles into grams so we can multiply by the molar mass of aluminum sulfate and you should find that that molar mass is 342.15 so now if we have a look at our units we've cancelled out moles of sulfate with moles of sulfate moles of aluminum sulfate and moles of aluminum sulfate. We now have grams per liter. So obviously what we want to get rid of that liters yet and we do have one more piece of information and that says that we were making one, a 100 milliliter solution. So let's just turn that into liters. 0 0.100 liters is 100 mils and we don't have to divide it by anything. So now our liters will nicely cancel with our liters and both of these are talking about liters of solution. I could have labeled it on there. But now our remaining unit is only grams, which is exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and calculate this. 0.6 divided by 3 times 342.15 times 0.1 and we get 6.843, which we'd round to 6.84 and the units are grams of aluminum sulfate. So hopefully this is clear that ion concentration is really just an application of stoichiometry and depending on what you're asked there might be some simplifications to do and if not then we can always rely on our strategy of multiplying and watching our units. Key that you should not forget is start with your balanced chemical equation.